you all have been asking for some sort of top number of speakers. So recently I just did a poll and I said, which one are you most interested in? This is the one you chose. So this is the one we're gonna go with. If you'd like to see other top X speakers under X dollars, let me know in the comment section below. Over the years, I've reviewed probably 250 different speakers and I've curated it down into this list. Now, it doesn't mean that other ones that didn't make this list aren't good. It just means that these are my personal favorite for various reasons. And in this list, you're gonna find big name brands, but you might also find some brands that you've never heard of before. I also provided a mixture of options here because the room, your overall taste, your needs and preferences, those things matter. While I've numbered them from 10 to one, this list is not set in stone. Some of these could easily swap places around depending on your room, your needs, and your preferences. And a final note, this video is not gonna include all the data that I normally provide because it just takes too long. And honestly, I wanted to do something different. I wanted to provide more of a subjective overview that is backed with data. And if you wanna see all the data or you wanna see those reviews, I will have the links in the description section below and you can check them out in full there. Starting out is the Klipsch RP6000F2 floor standing speaker, which currently retails for about $1,400 per pair. This speaker is a high sensitivity speaker at about 90 decibels. It has good bass extension and it has overall really good directivity. Now that last part matters a lot because you will probably want to EQ the speaker, especially if you're using it for home theater. This is a speaker that really benefits or even really requires you to place it near the front wall. And when I say near the front wall, I mean within about a foot from the back of the speaker to the wall behind the speaker. Without that, you're gonna have two shelved of a mid bass area and the speaker is gonna sound overly bright. Now in room, the speaker may sound bright a little bit on its own, but you can use some absorption panels on the side or you can use some equalization to bring that brightness area down a little bit. This speaker is what I would describe as narrow in radiation. So there's not a lot of envelopment. And in that regard, I tend to prefer a speaker that radiates at about plus or minus 60 degrees, whereas this one is about plus or minus 30 degrees, meaning 30 degrees off to the side, 30 degrees off to this side. And that's not a hard wall. That's just when the response starts to fall. Now this can be helpful for a room that is extremely reflective and you don't want to have to put in a lot of reflection absorbing materials or you don't have a lot of furnishings in there. If that's the case for you, then a more narrow radiating speaker might be the better choice. This speaker also benefits from low distortion and low compression. So while you will need a subwoofer, this thing does do pretty good at getting pretty loud. Next up on the list is the Kali Audio IN8 V2. These currently retail for just under $1,000 per pair. And this speaker is a powered active monitor set of speakers, which means that you don't have to buy amplification for it. All you need is a source with RCA or XLR balanced outputs, plug them into these speakers and you're ready to rock. Now I will say that there are some diffraction issues from what looks like the former sticking up above the cone and that creates some imbalance in the higher frequency around 10K or higher. Aside from this, however, this speaker is very neutral and it makes a really great studio monitor, but you can also use it in the far field. The base extension is down to about 50 Hertz in room. It has reasonably wide response and it has really great neutrality. The downside of the speaker, however, is that like most powered speakers, it does have a limiter built into it. So as you increase the volume, the lower base extension is cut off more and more. This may matter to you if you are listening at a very far distance or in a very big room. You could always use a subwoofer to make up for this, but it's something to consider. Coming in at number eight is the ELAC Debut 3.0 DF63, currently on sale for $1,300 per pair. It has an upper mid-range cut, meaning that it is slightly warm, but still relatively overall balanced. It works best in a room that has curtains or maybe some sidewall absorption panels to even out the lower treble region because there's a little bit of a discontinuity in the crossover between the mid-range and that treble. So the treble gets a little bit wider, sends a little bit more energy to the sidewall than it does in that mid-range area. Using some panel absorption or even just some curtains will help to tame that lower treble brightness. This speaker also benefits from being placed close to the front wall as well. 
Number seven, the MagnaPen LRS Plus, which retails for about $1,000 per pair. Now this one's different. This is a MagnaPlanar speaker that is unlike any other speaker that you've seen on this list. And for the most part, unlike any other speaker that I have ever reviewed. We're about 250 speaker reviews in. This is the only time that I've reviewed this particular speaker. And I gotta say, I really liked it. Now in terms of overall transparency or neutrality, it's not quite there, but it's not as bad as I thought it would be. This speaker does need a subwoofer 100%, and there is a dip into the mid bass of about a couple dB, around 300 hertz, so you're gonna lose some punch. And in that regard, you may actually wanna to try to find a subwoofer to supplement the mid bass area in that region. However, those things aside, it sounds awesome. It throws a huge sound stage. It is a dipole radiation speaker design where what it sends to the front is essentially what it sends to the back and the sidewalls are canceled out. You'll need a lot of power and you will have to make sure that you are in the perfect sweet spot because without that, things are gonna fall apart pretty quickly. But if you get those things right for a thousand bucks a pair, I definitely think it's a speaker worth trying out. Number six, the Polk Reserve R500 retails for about $1,300 per pair. This speaker has good linearity on axis, but narrow radiation of the tweeter means that it might sound a bit dark in the room. Now, what happens here is this features a ring radiator tweeter, and that ring radiator tweeter is not necessarily known for broad dispersion in the higher frequencies. In fact, it narrows up pretty quickly. So because of that, there's less room interaction, less sidewall bounce from that higher frequency area whereas there is sidewall bounce from the upper mid-range area. And that discontinuity creates a sound that can be a bit edgy, maybe sibilant, maybe bright, depending on how you define it. Now, there are some things that you can do. Number one, you can EQ that region down, the four to five kilohertz area. You could also use some sidewall absorption or some paneling for that. The speaker works best when pointed directly at the listening position. And I would also advise you to bring the speaker off the wall probably at least a foot, if not more. If you put it too close to the wall, I think it's gonna result in a little bit too boomy bass. Number five, the Arundel 1961 monitor retails currently for 1150 per pair. Now this speaker is a little bit of a tank and I say that in a good way. They have low compression, low distortion and overall really good neutrality. The only area that they lack is in bass output. This 1961 monitor rolls off at around 80, maybe 70, 80 hertz or so. So you absolutely, you're gonna to have to have a subwoofer. You cannot use these as mains for music without a subwoofer. And I would also recommend you pair these with a subwoofer for home theater, which you're gonna do anyway. Having said that, I think they make great mains. They would make a great pair of surrounds as well for home theater. Another downside of this speaker is that the vertical radiation window is quite narrow. Now, most two-way designs are, well, I would say within like plus or minus 20 degrees or so. MTM designs where you have a mid-range, a tweeter, and a mid-range below it tend to have an even more narrow vertical radiation, which means that you kind of have that head and a vice aspect where you don't wanna move too much up or down, right? So that really comes into play when you have multiple seating rows. If you have a home theater like that, then consider the narrow radiation vertically of the speaker. Number four on the list is the Ascend Acoustics Sierra One V2, which retails for about $1,000 per pair. At about $1,000 per pair, the speaker has pretty much everything that you could want in a small bookshelf speaker. It has excellent build quality, it has really great tonality. It has extension down to about 45, 50 Hertz in room, and it has nice wide radiation. So there's a lot of envelopment in this speaker. Now the downside, this is the major downside of the speaker is its sensitivity is low. It's the lowest on my list by about two decibels at 81.5 decibels. This also shows up as an issue in multi-tone distortion. So this speaker is not gonna play very loud. If you're sitting, I would say within uh, maybe like two meters, three meters or so, and you can supplement this with a subwoofer, then it's an excellent buy. If you're sitting further away or you have a larger room or you just like to turn these speakers up loud, then please consider this factor and you're also gonna need a lot of power for the speaker. Next up on the list is Kef Q Concerto Meta at $1,400 per pair. What you get from this speaker is really good in-room neutrality and you get consistent horizontal directivity, which means that 
from seat to seat, it's gonna sound very similar. The overall envelopment of this speaker and the radiation of this is about plus or minus 50 degrees. Whereas I said, I like about plus or minus six degrees. So I'm just like, my preference is just a little bit wider. Having said that, the thing about this speaker is that it's very consistent where some speakers may be plus or minus 70 or 60 at two kilohertz, they might be much more narrow at higher frequencies. And this speaker keeps that consistency pretty much from uh, it's lower treble to upper treble. And that's really good feature to have. This speaker does work better when it's pointed closer to direct at you, but not necessarily direct at you. So you could tow it out a little bit. If you tow the speaker out too much, it's going to sound very dark. And that's thanks to its rolled off top end or basically shelved down top end. Number two, the Audio First Fidelia speaker retails for about $1,150. Now this is a new brand out of the UK and this is a kit speaker, but don't let that scare you. If you know how to use a screwdriver, you'll be really glad that you check this speaker out. The overall response to the speaker is extremely neutral. Honestly, it's one of my favorite speakers that I've ever heard. I like that it has very broad horizontal radiation, gives more envelopment, and there's nothing bad about this speaker in terms of tonality. It's just overall extremely good. Bass extension to about 45 or 50 hertz does well being brought off the wall a couple feet or so. And I would say that if you're in the market for a small compact-ish bookshelf speaker, this is the way to go. Now, the downside of this speaker is the fact that it is relatively small and it uses a five and a quarter inch mid woofer. That means that it's limited in SPL capability, not only in terms of distortion and compression, but it also has rather low sensitivity at about 83.5 decibels. Going back to the pros though, you have broad radiation, which means that you can move side to side of the speaker and it's gonna sound very similar. And in fact, I would say that if you're looking for a really high quality, but small home theater setup, buy five of these suckers, seriously. And I think you'll be very impressed. And finally, the Asai Lab C6B. These retail for about 1150 US dollars and they come from South Korea. So just keep that in mind. Now, from what I understand, they are currently backed up out into July, but if you're not in a hurry, I think they're definitely worth the wait. You can see that they're a little bit larger than the Audio First Fidelia speaker. And that really makes the difference in terms of SPL capability. Average sensitivity is closer to about 86 decibels you get really, really good linearity. You have about plus or minus 50 degrees of radiation width and horizontal, which typically is maybe just a little bit narrow for me. But what I really found interesting is that as it gets into the higher frequency, it actually expands out a little bit more. And I think this is the first speaker that I've heard that does this consistently. Now, other speakers maybe get a little narrow and then get a little wide again, but this speaker is like, kind of 50 degrees and then it spreads out to about 60 degrees and it maintains that. And I just, I really like that. Another factor about the speaker that's really good and separates it from other two-way designs is its vertical radiation. It has about plus or minus 40, 30 to 40 degrees of vertical radiation. This speaker is designed to be listened to with your ears level with the midpoint between the tweeter and the midwoofer below it. So keep that in mind. But even if you're not dead on, you should be okay. So what's the downside of this speaker? Well, the impedance is pretty low. So I would make sure that whatever you're driving this with is capable of driving a four ohm load. So that's my top 10 under $1,500. If you like this video, please take the time to leave it a like. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, leave them in the comment section below. I would especially be interested in knowing which ones you guys would rank or if you would change the order or if anything that I said just doesn't seem right to you. The goal of this video is to give you some options in this price range. And my hope is that you say, hey, this one looks kind of cool. This one looks kind of cool. Now I'm going to dive into this a little bit more. And ideally what you should do is order a couple of them and see what you think about them in your room and your placement. Now I can talk about the data all day and give you suggestions, but ultimately it matters what they look like in your room and how they sound in your room. The data is definitely a way to get there, but it doesn't tell you everything, okay? And with that in mind, if you don't mind ordering some of these through my affiliate links below, that earns me a small commission at no additional cost to you. I don't have affiliate links for all of these, but the ones that I do have, I'll put them in the description section below. And that really, honestly, that helps me the most for this channel, it really does. YouTube ad revenue sucks. And also you can join me at patreon.com slash Aaron's Audio Corner. 
that really helps me out and it gets you some behind the scenes information, direct contact to me, polls, just different stuff that I like to do from time to time. And with that said, I'm going to bail out because I've been doing this for a long time. I'll talk to y'all later. Take care. Peace.